Hello Internet and welcome to another Blender video. Blender is a cool modeling tool that can also be used to prepare meshes for 3D printing, especially if you use it in a more design and art related way. I already made a video on the overall setup of Blender for 3D printing and I will show the link here in the upper corner. For 3D printing, we can use different modeling styles in Blender to create our models. I would like to make this video to be a part of a video series concerning different modeling styles for 3D printing in combination with Blender. But for now, let's start and focus on today's topic and let's use the particle system for modeling. The particle system comes in handy if we need fine detailed modeled surfaces that are combinations of submesh structures. It's a little bit like tiles. You can organize the tiles to form your surfaces in a very well structured way, an organized way, or you can organize them in a random way to form irregular surf surfaces. But more on that later. We start with the setup of the setup measurement unit system in Blender and use the metric system with millimeter as a unit. In addition, we have to set up the 3D viewport grid to the same scale. For demonstration, we use the standard cube. Give the cube some geometry to have something to work with. I will also apply a bevel using the bevel modifier to have a little bit more interesting geometry. You can also use the edge bevel function in the edit mode to create your bevels. So, now we have our basic model. We add a hair particle system later to the cube and use simple objects as a single hair. Therefore, we are adding a hair object and give it the desired shape. Will be our sub mesh structure that we will use in combination to form our surface. The individual hair objects together will then form our surface, so we should give the particle some thickness. The thick end will later form the wall. We should give the particle some thickness, because the thick end will later form the wall. Now let's create a hair particle system. Count the faces, see the status infos down below and create one particle per face. Under emission source, I uncheck random and use a particle per face. Activate object rotation and object scale in the render object settings of the particle system. This allows you to adjust the position of the hair object. The direction of the particle objects will orientate on the face normal of the emitter object. I want to position my hair particle objects in a very well organized way. For other cases, it might be better to use a random organization of the hair objects. To give the surface some kind of randomness and make it look like a natural structure. So everything is possible, just try it out. Make sure you have a nice surface with no space between the particle objects. Mm -hmm. 
move the emitter to a separate collection and apply the particle system. Now we have individual objects that can be joined together to form one mesh. This is the time where you have the chance to move the individual objects around, change them, organize them in another way. You can manually move them, scale them. So it's up to you to change your model here using the individual particle objects. Move the emitter to a separate collection and apply the particle system. The individual objects can then be joined together to form one mesh. To limit the effort of preparing the generated model for the slicer, I added a cube inside. To make it easier for the slicer software, I added a cube inside to make it easier for the slicer software to calculate the infill. You can then export the model to a SDL file as shown. If we export the model and using millimeter as units, Kura will automatically scale the model to show it in the correct size. Any operations on a complex model especially the use of the boolean modifier, can lead to a model with many flaws and difficult to slice. You can have thin walls, you can have um, non-planar faces, you can have intersecting geometry and many other things more can happen. Try to slice the project. Try to slice your model from time to time using your preferred slicer to see the effect of your changes on the model. For example, I combined the model with a cylinder and I used the Boolean modifier to cut out a cylinder. To get around some slicer issues, make sure to delete any unnecessary geometry 
as shown in the video and try to clean up the model using the 3D printed toolbox add-on and mesh tools. Try to slice your model from time to time using your preferred slicer to see the effect of your changes on the model. But this is strong related to the slicer software you are using, in my case I use Cura. Out of my perspective, I normally check the following important points. First, I check the normal direction. Are the normals directing inside or outside of the model? The normals will be used by the slicer to tell the slicer what's in and what's out of the model. Second, I dissolve overlapping vertices. Therefore, I can use Edit Mesh Cleanup Degenerate Dissolve. Third, I check for non-flat or concave faces. I can solve this problem with Edit Face, Triangulate or Flatten Surface. Fourth, I check sharp edges and I can use the bevel modifier or I can use the, the bevel tool to get rid of sharp edges, make them manually softer. And the fifth point, in case of thin faces, I give them some thickness on the sixth and the sixth point is check overhangs and if necessary adjust the overhangs to make them less sharp. To get around some slicer issues, make sure to delete any unnecessary geometry as shown in the video and try to clean up the model using the 3D printed toolbox add-on and mesh tools. Also check for unintended holes or loose parts and keep in mind how you can print your mesh with your printer technology. Also your slicer software can have its own mesh correction functions. But this is strong related to the slicer software you are using, in my case I use Cura. For example in Cura we have the mesh fixes section with different functions that we can use to correct our model. For example the remove all holes function in Cura. I will add a video on the different correction techniques in Blender as one of the next topics.
I printed the model on an Anycubic i3 Mega with a more or less standard profile. In my case, I use Cura. See my settings in the video for more details. Just pause the video. Yeah, that's all for today. Um, if you have questions, feel free to add your questions and ideas in the comment section below. I will be happy about to get some feedback and maybe to get some new ideas. And yeah, in the upcoming videos, I will, I will continue this topic. Um, I have interesting ideas what we can use what makes Blender so special for modeling and how we can use functions in Blender that we do not have in other software and that really helps us to create models and meshes in a different way. So that's all for today. Have a nice time. See you back on my channel and goodbye.